What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michael Borky. I appreciate you being here and checking this out. I know I promised I'd go live tonight for schedule release day, but something has come up. I have got to be somewhere tonight. So we're doing this, as you can see, the sun's up a little bit early. So I'm depending on uh, leaks and depending on sourcing to fill out the schedules. If these are wrong, please forgive me. I don't believe that they are. But when the schedules get released, if I'm reacting to one that's inaccurate, don't blame me. Blame the leakers and blame uh, my sources on this. So schedule release day across the SEC. Of course, we're going to talk about Ole Miss and Mississippi State's 2024 schedule. We already know the opponents. We already know road and home, but we don't know the dates, except for today. We now know the dates. So let's talk about them. Again, before we get into this, though, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment as well. I would appreciate that very much. And uh, let's just get right into it. So Ole Miss's schedule, it's tough, because they're all tough. The SEC did a really good job of balancing road versus home and the difficulty of it in the integration year of Texas and Oklahoma. They're all difficult. Ole Miss's is difficult, but it's manageable, especially relative to the expectations the team is going to have for 2024. So it starts with Furman, and look out for my Paladins. Upset Central. I can't even say it seriously. Ole Miss gets an FCS game out of the gate, Middle Tennessee in week two. They are at Wake Forest, kind of a tricky test in week two. Dave Clawson does a really good job there at Wake Forest. That's not going to be the easiest road trip. It's not particularly close to home. Um, it's not like it's a difficult place to play, although Ole Miss fans have not so fond memories of trips to Winston-Salem from years past. But tricky test, a team that they should be better than, uh, all things considered. But still, not the easiest game uh, for Ole Miss in week three. They turn around and come home. Uh, to face Georgia Southern, and that's their non-conference. They're getting all of their non-conference out of the way in the first four weeks of the season, unlike this past year, where they had Louisiana Monroe before the Egg Bowl. Not the case this time around. We'll get to that in a second. First SEC game is home with Kentucky. That's a good place. It's, you know, you get your feet wet a little bit in conference play with a home game. Kentucky's going to be tough. You would much rather play them in Oxford, of course, than in Lexington. But uh, that's a good start to conference play. That's kind of what you wanted uh, out of your first SEC game as opposed to like going on the road to Texas or whatever. Getting Kentucky at home to start league play is uh, is a good spot on the schedule for that. After that, they go to South Carolina and then they go to LSU in back-to-back -back weeks. Those are two difficult places to play. Who knows what South Carolina is going to be by then. If we're being honest, that should be a game that they win. Frankly, Ole Miss should be 6-0 going to Baton Rouge with the win over Furman, Middle Tennessee, at Wake Forest, Georgia, Southern Kentucky, and at South Carolina. I know a lot is going to happen between now and then, but just on the surface, knowing what we know about what Ole Miss is going to return, paired with what South Carolina has been and what they're going to return, Ole Miss should be 6-0 and going to that game at LSU, and that's going to be one of those circle, underline, point arrows to kind of games on the schedule. That should be a very big one. In, uh, in 2024 for Ole Miss. The first of two bye weeks comes after their game in Baton Rouge in a good spot for a bye week. Oklahoma, who is presumably going to be really good. They'll be preseason ranked somewhere in the top 15. I know Dylan Gabriel has moved on and they're welcoming in an inexperienced, albeit extremely talented quarterback. But getting the bye week before LSU probably would have been better uh, for Ole Miss, but still welcoming Oklahoma Again, who knows what they're going to be like by then, but the expectation is for them to be really, really good and getting an off week before they make that trip to Oxford is, uh, I think that's that's a nice break for Ole Miss getting the bye week before Oklahoma. They turn around and go to Arkansas, and, you know, I expect Arkansas to be pretty poor in 2024. That's usually a very difficult place to play. Maybe not the case uh, this year. We will have to see. After Arkansas, again, kind of a poorly timed bye week. They have their home game with Georgia before the off week. Uh, that will be a big one. Another circle, underline, draw arrows pointing at it. That game, those three games, I think, for this season for Ole Miss. At LSU, Oklahoma, and Georgia. Those are the three most difficult games on their schedule. And I think it's not even really close. If they're going to make the playoff, which is going to be the expectation going into 2024, you have to at least win one of those three games and not slip up anywhere else. So those three are the biggest ones. You get the off week before 
what could be in what usually is a tricky game at Florida before the Egg Bowl. So instead of Louisiana Monroe at home, you're in Gainesville before the Egg Bowl, and that's a tough spot. I don't think Florida's going to be worth anything by that point, but again, it's you know it's December 13th, and so things can change both good and bad for all of these teams between now and then, but usually you would look at a trip to the Swamp as really difficult, just like that trip to Fayetteville, but right now it doesn't feel like that's exactly going to be the case. And then, of course, the Egg Bowl. There's going to be talk about the Egg Bowl date as of now. It's not official one way or another, uh, Thanksgiving or that Saturday. Maybe by the time the schedules actually get released, there is an answer. But as of this recording, uh, there is no answer on exactly what day the Egg Bowl is going to be. I know the expectation is for it to be on Thanksgiving, but that could change. Uh, we will have to see. So that's literally turn the page to Mississippi State. Again, that's old Miss's schedule. I'll run through it one more time quickly, quickly for you, actually. Furman, Middle Tennessee State at home at Wake Forest, Georgia Southern, Kentucky at home, back-to-back -back road games at South Carolina and at LSU. They have an off week after Baton Rouge. Home road, home with Oklahoma, Arkansas, Georgia. The second bye week again this year is one of those weird calendar years where if the season starts in August, you get two bye weeks at Florida, Mississippi State at home. No Alabama on this schedule, which is a welcome sight, I assume, for Ole Miss fans um, didn't get Missouri from the East, which is a nice break as well there on the schedule. So it's tough because they're all tough, but Ole Miss can navigate this schedule as well. Again, turning literally turning the page to Mississippi State now. Uh, the schedule for Jeff Lebby in his annual or first annual season as the head coach at Mississippi State, uh, the road games are brutal. And we already knew what they were, but you are – at Texas, at Georgia, at Tennessee, at Ole Miss, and for good measure, you're at Arizona State, who had a kind of a down season, but they are resurging and they're portaling well, and, and they're going to be well coached, and that's a difficult game. So uh, welcome to your first head coaching job, Jeff Lebby. There's those five road games for you. That is very, very difficult for Mississippi State. Did not get any favors with the road schedule from the SEC. They start with Eastern Kentucky, a nice introduction to the, the Jeff Lebby offense. I assume that there's going to be a, an unbelievable amount of points that day uh, just to kind of welcome uh, state fans to the Lebby offense. And uh, I, again, I assume they're, they're going to try to break the scoreboard that day. Like I said before, a tough week two test. It's at Arizona in week two. That's going to be a difficult test. That's It's a long trip. It'll be an improved team. You're still trying to figure yourself out who you are and, and things like that. That's a tough spot uh, for Mississippi State to go on the road for their uh, Power 5 non-conference game. They turn around and host Toledo and Florida in back-to-back -back weeks. Florida, uh, that's a pivotal game for both of those teams. If you look at Florida's schedule, they have what will be the most difficult schedule in college football. Go check that out if you haven't seen it. Oh my gosh, why would they do that to themselves? It's it's ridiculous. Their non-conference games are Florida State, Miami, and UCF, and then there's a throwaway one in there. But they're playing UCF, Florida State, and Miami in the non-conference. Why would you do that to yourself? So Florida's going to be seeking wins. That's a spot on the schedule uh, that they're that Florida's going to look at as ooh, that's a winnable game. You got to get that one. Mississippi State, I assume, will be looking at it the same way. So a pivotal game for both in uh, in Week Four in Starkville. Uh, turn around and have to go to Texas after that. That's just not fun. I mean, huge venue, really super talented football team. Again, welcome to the SEC, uh, Jeff Lebby. Here is a road game at Texas, who is just joining your league. Now, he's got some familiarity with Texas, obviously. And hell, his offense beat Texas this year. But uh, it's a little, 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 little different animal in year one at Mississippi State. Not a fun spot on the, on the schedule. There for Jeff Lebby. Their first bye week comes after that. So they're at Texas and at Georgia in consecutive games, but there is a bye week in between, breaking that up a little bit. That's a, that's a nice break to split those two road games up for Mississippi State. That is not fun uh, at all, having to go to those two places, back-to-back uh, -back games. That's, uh, that's tough, and it's just life in this league. But again, no favors done from the league office. Having to go to Texas, who will be a top-five team preseason, and then following that up with a road trip at Georgia, who will be a top-five team preseason. 
After that, they have three consecutive home games with A&M, Arkansas, and UMass. Those A&M and Arkansas games are really interesting. State has had a lot of success against A&M uh, in recent history. They just have. Uh, both welcoming in new coaches. You, you know about the talent that exists in College Station, even though they've got guys hitting the portal, and that's not fun uh, for an Aggie fan anyway. They're still left behind is still a ton of talent. Uh, but that is uh, that's an interesting game, another key game for Mississippi State there. After Georgia, you would assume that you're going to be coming off back-to-back -back losses, an opportunity in those next two weeks with an A&M team with a new coach that you've had success against. Although, as we sit here on December 13th, you would think that they're going to be an underdog in that game. But again, we will see so much changes between now and then. And then Arkansas. Arkansas uh, might be a must-win if if we're being honest, if you think Florida's reeling, well, look at the state of Arkansas at the moment. And so that is one of those home games that you look at as of right now where you think if you're going to have a season that fans are satisfied with, that's probably a game that you have to win. A nice scheduling break, getting UMass before you have to go to Knoxville. It's not a bye week, but it'll kind of feel like one because of what UMass is. It Certainly, it should feel like one uh, anyway. So even though it's not a bye before Tennessee – at least it's UMass instead of having to have like A&M in Tennessee in back-to-back -back weeks. You get that broken up with the important Arkansas game, UMass, and then you have to go to Knoxville, which, as you guys know, is an incredibly difficult place to play on top of Tennessee being what they are currently. After Tennessee is that bye week, so they get a, the second bye week just like Ole Miss. Uh, Missouri coming to Starkville, that is a, that's a tough draw. Now, at least you get them at home, but... Uh, Missouri was really good this year. And again, things change. I, I need to stop qualifying that. You guys know that by now. But it's a program that appears to be here to stay. They, they are portaling extremely well. They will return a lot. Um, that's a tough game. At least it's at home before you have to go to Ole Miss in the Egg Bowl. So usually you would look at drawing Missouri as kind of a scheduling break. Not anymore. Drawing Missouri from the East, even at home, is uh, that's, not, uh, that's not ideal. You would much rather have Vanderbilt instead of Missouri. And I was about to say you much would much rather have Florida instead of Missouri, but you also have uh, have Florida. That's a, a tough game. At least it's at home. And finally, of course, the Egg Bowl at Old Miss. So the schedule one more time: Eastern Kentucky at Arizona State, Toledo, Florida at home, at Texas, off week at Georgia. That's just not fair. A and M in Arkansas and UMass in consecutive weeks, all in Starkville at Tennessee by week, Missouri at home at Old Miss. Those are your schedules as has been leaked and sourced to me. Again, if they are wrong, uh, we will blame them and blast them publicly. So again, I'm sorry I didn't go live tonight. Again, something has come up. Uh, I, I have to I have to be there. Uh, so I, I cannot uh, I, I cannot be live tonight. So hopefully this suffices for you. Uh, navigatable, navigable. The schedule for Ole Miss sets up well enough to where they can match expectations uh, going into. 2024. And for Mississippi State, can you find a way to get back to the postseason? Are there six wins in that schedule? You were given no favors on your road schedule from the SEC. Can you at least show competence and forward progress? Pun absolutely not intended, but that's kind of the goal for Mississippi State, especially looking at this schedule in 2024. Can you show that you're moving forward as a program, even if the record doesn't exactly uh, display that. After looking at this, I think that's a fair expectation for uh, 2024. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like the video, leave a comment, and I will see you live uh, tomorrow night, Thursday night. I will see you live uh, to talk about this in more detail. See you then.